Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk with you about the researched argument assignment. So you've already started working on the annotated bibliography. That means that you've chosen a topic and you've started doing research. Now you're going to take that topic and you're going to turn it into an argument. So you're going to argue for or against whatever your topic is discussing. And then you're going to use the research that you've began collecting to inform the paper. So let's start out with going over the here's and there's of the assignment itself. You're going to have a rough draft due for this assignment. You're also going to have a final draft, obviously, and it's going to be due on the 1st of November. So take note of your due dates. You're required to make sure that this paper is formatted via MLA. We've talked about that in previous videos in our first weeks of the semester. Uh, if you don't recall some of the specific formatting details, you're welcome to go back and look at those videos. If you have questions about that, you're also welcome to reach out to me and ask questions, and I can go more into that with you. For this paper, you need to write a six to eight page uh, essay, and this does not include the work cited. Six to eight pages sounds like a lot, this is going to be double spaced and per MLA it should be Times New Roman font size 12. And once you start meeting the requirements of the pieces within this assignment and including quotes, you'll find that you get to six pages pretty quickly. Notes on. For this paper, you are required to participate in and contribute to a larger conversation about your topic. You should be articulating a claim and supporting it with relevant, timely evidence. You should use ethos, pathos, and logos in your argument to illustrate what you understand regarding that argument. You should also acknowledge a counterclaim. So you should have a counterclaim in your paper. Um, the counterclaim should be anywhere from a paragraph to three paragraphs long. And towards the end of your paper is where those generally take place. If you find another place in your paper where you want to put it, that's fine too, as long as it fits well. And this will make sure that your paper is well-rounded, of course. Anyone who can acknowledge the other side of an argument within their own argument while making a point usually is far more persuasive than someone who can't. You're going to want to integrate your sources and do so by including quotes, paraphrases, and summaries. And I would suggest that you shouldn't use more than two quotes per page. And um, if you, when you use those quotes, you should not be using page long quotes, obviously. They should be, you know, two to three long, two to three sentence long quotes, excuse me. And as always, make sure you're using proper grammar and sentence, uh, grammar, spelling, and sentence level control in your syntax within the paper. If you have any questions or concerns about this paper, please reach out to me. Uh, the most difficult part of this paper really is the getting started, and you've already done that in this class. So you have your topic, you've started your research, and now it's really just a matter of diving in. Uh, at this point, I advise not changing topics. If for some reason you find yourself just stuck with your topic, you get into your research, uh, you find that it's just not working out for you, it's not going the way you thought it would be, um, etc. Talk to me, let me know, and then we can talk about you switching topics. Um, but it's best for you to go ahead and go with what you have. You can switch sides if you need to, but I would go ahead and obviously, you know, not 
switch back and forth in the paper, but choose a side at the very beginning and go with it. But if you decide you're for, for example, if you're for minimum wage raising um, in your annotated bibliography, but you want to go against it for the researched argument, that's okay. You can switch that if that's just you know what you want to do. Here is the rubric for the assignment. So this is the grading standard that I use. I like to make sure that you have this readily available when you're working on anything in this class. Um, so once you start working on this assignment, you're going to want to get your rough draft together and then we'll peer review. But before you turn in the assignment and even as you're working on it throughout, you may want to go down here and look at this rubric and make sure that you're meeting the requirements. So does the paper articulate an argument? Does the paper use three pieces of relevant evidence to support the argument? So your thesis statement should have an argument and it should have three main points to it to support that argument. Does it have that? And that's 15 points of your, of your paper out of 100. So that's a big chunk. Um, also, that, would, that would, right there would derail your entire paper. Does the paper use ethos, pathos, and logos to illustrate the argument and make it rhetorically complex? If you have any questions about any of this, please reach out to me. I, I don't want to spend the next 20 minutes reading this out to you. But it, it's really important to be able to write papers like this in here so that you can go on to do so in your other classes throughout your college career and do so successfully. Also, um, as a bit of nerdy advice, <laughs> learning this method of, of argument can be helpful in life with arguing, and uh, we can talk more about that later, but it is just a nerdy way of arguing and classical argument. It's beneficial as well. I'll put out another video talking about that later on. Anyway, again, reach out to me. It's better uh, to reach out earlier than later if you can, but reach out whenever you're having problems. If there's anything going on, if you're having trouble finding research, anything like that, just let me know. I'm happy to help. Please take care of yourself and get lots of rest and make time to do the research for this and get the work done. If you fall behind on this, it's gonna. this is not an assignment that you can just do the week before. This is something that takes time. So give yourself time. But stay healthy in the meantime and take care of yourselves. Have a great day.